Hello and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory. For those of you new here, my name is Mark Radici. Now today we're going to talk about an integral part of my setup. That's my sketching kit and observing journal. It's cheap and will greatly enhance your observing. So I'm going to go through the tools we need, the mechanics of drawing at the eyepiece of adding stars and nebulosity, how to get the best out of an observation, and how to digitize and display your images online. Now this setup is dead easy to put together and it's cheap as well. Get some decent artist paper from, from the art store. We need pencils. I use an HB mechanical propelling pencil for drawing stars, it's always sharp. And an ordinary pencil for adding in nebulosity. And I also have a harder pencil for more diffuse for the fainter nebula. A pencil eraser a blending stump, an eraser shield, and I also have a larger eraser and pencil sharpener. Most important of all, a dim red light. You could do a little arc, and then with this blending stump, you can turn that into more delicate nebulosity and subtle shading. So then what about specific things if you had a notch in the middle of nebulosity? Let's say I want a little straight patch in there, it stops me getting pencil on other things. Or if I want to erase a very small part, now my observing journal isn't a dry train spotting list of objects in the night sky, it helps to capture the joy of being out under the night sky and the observing experience. So in addition to the target itself, I record observing companions, wildlife encounters, new equipment I'm testing, any bright meteors, the weather, all the things that we appreciate when we're outside. Let's make a first-hand observation of a dying star. So deep in the summer Milky Way is the Dumbbell Nebula and you'll see why it's called that in a moment. Now this object, the Dumbbell Nebula, is easily observable in binoculars and small telescopes. It's a star roughly the same size as our Sun that thousands of years ago reached the end of its life and expelled its atmosphere into this nebulous cloud. So it's a beautiful summer's evening, sun shining. I've come to the observatory, roll the roof back, get all my kit ready. I've just noticed there's a whole load of bats flying around. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a tawny owl just going past. Now with the telescope slewed across, we're going to shut off all the lights and take the time for my eyes to fully dark adapt. We've got the object in the eyepiece, and I'm just taking the time to notice the shape of the nebula. Are there any brighter regions in the nebulosity? Are there any shadows, any dark patches? What shape is it? Does it have sharp edges? Are there any gradients in the nebulosity? And just noticing those star patterns around the nebula itself. Now this is where tracking is useful. It's not essential, but I do find it useful just to keep the object centered in the field of view. So on my notepad, I'm going to record the date, the start time, and my observing conditions as well. Oh, and of course the object that I'm looking at. With the mechanical pencil, I'm going to lay out the brighter field stars. And I'm using grid coordinates. So is it a bit below or above one star? Is it off at three o'clock to this one? I'm making triangles and shapes and then by putting these patterns together we can quickly and effectively lay out the star field. I mark out the brighter stars with a mechanical pencil. I use a larger diameter for the brighter stars. Into stars using the field stars as a reference. Now 
Now I'm going to gently apply some pencil graphite and smudge to position the nebulosity. And I find the best way to do that is to put a little bit, bit of pencil on the side of the sketch, on the side of the paper, and pick it up on the tip of the blending stump and apply to the nebula in layers. You can do this repeatedly, build up the nebulosity to show what your eyes can see. Now some nebula really respond well to a filter. Now this is an ultra high contrast filter. It allows the wavelengths uh, of light that the nebula emit to pass through and it blocks everything else. And it really darkens the background. It also dims the stars while still allowing the light from the nebula to pass through. It really has a dramatic effect and it makes the nebula really quite dramatic now. I can see that there's brighter lobes and I can certainly see that the outer region this more diffuse stuff outside of the apple core shape is pretty clear. So I'm going to add those to the sketch and this is where a dim red light is so important because as your eyes adjust to the dark any stray light can affect your night vision and render the objects invisible, those subtle tenuous details right at the limit of vision. I'm going to take a few minutes now to enjoy the beauty of this object and just check how it appears with my sketch. So this is why I love visually observing the deep sky. I'm seeing this object firsthand. I'm making a record that I can come back to in time, in seasons to come. And it allows me to personally experience this wonderful object. I haven't got a camera, I haven't got a laptop, I haven't got processing software getting in the way. Plus, we saw the bats earlier, we've heard a tawny owl, and the weather is lovely, the Milky Way is visible, so what's not to like? So with the sketch completed, I'm going to add in the finish time, record the sky conditions, the eyepiece, the filters that I've used. So with our sketch finished in our logbook, the next thing to do is either scan it in or take a photo with your phone or with your camera and file open. So we'll put this into Photoshop. So let's crop it down from the picture I took in the garden. Press Control I, and that inverts the image, so it's a more natural looking. And sometimes you do get this texture appears on the image, just which is a result of the quality of the paper. It's going to go around that. And then do a quick blur filter. Blur, Gaussian blur. Just get rid of that, it's a bit too strong. Let's turn you down a bit. So about three should be right. There we go, that looks a bit more natural. And I also like to adjust the levels, so enhance, adjust the lighting levels, or Control L. And I'll just bring the black slider just so that we're touching the edge there. That gets rid of that lighter cast. And as a result, I'm just gonna make that just a smidge brighter just to bring out that fainter regions around there. Okay, that. So we can now save that as a drawing. And what I like to do is just transfer that to a template so all my pictures look the same. So I'll just copy and paste that in. So there we have it. I've pasted the sketch into my observing template. So a record of a dying star deep in the Milky Way.